Um, I believe this is where we left our chemistry heroes, talking about solubility values. Had we done just a little bit of practice with the table on 404? I think we had started that. Okay. So what we're going to do now is a whole lot more practice on those kinds of problems. So the solubility table that you have in front of you, you will notice, let me pause this, you will notice that all the compounds start with the letter S. Okay. This is one small piece of a much larger solubility table. Um, and I grabbed a chunk of it just to give you an idea of what they look like and how they work. Um, you'll notice at the bottom this was developed by a chemistry, he's a chemistry undergrad named Fred Chu, Frederick Chu. Um, he put it on Wikipedia and his source is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry Database. And there are some holes in it. You'll notice that not every compound on here has a solubility value for every temperature. The thing that I forgot to grab when I made this, and I want you to add to your own solubility table, is that this is just like the one that you used in your book, per 100 grams of water. So the values here are given in grams of solute per 100 grams of water at whatever temperature in Celsius. And on the front, which is the side that has the temperatures across the top, you'll notice that there are 10 columns going from 0 to 100. On the back, that column header didn't transfer, so I, I would go ahead and write those across the top because you're going to be using both sides of this. That's what I did. Um, so, yeah, all of these values are 100 grams or grams of solute per 100 grams of water. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice, shall we? If I tell you that I am, I, well, I have a solution comprised of the following. A solution made of 100 grams of water and 119.5 grams of silver fluoride, so AGF. Is this solution at 10 degrees Celsius saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated? Okay. <coughs> So you'll need to use your table. What's your first step? How about finding a solubility value for silver fluoride? Seems reasonable. Yes, sir? It's unsaturated. How do we know that? So we looked down the column for 10 degrees and we looked at silver fluoride and how much solute could actually be dissolved at 10 degrees in 100 grams of water. Yeah, 120 grams of silver fluoride. So this isn't saturated. It's pretty darn close. I mean, we can't get a whole lot more solute to dissolve in there. But we could probably get a few more little grains of silver fluoride to dissolve in this solution. Okay, so it is an unsaturated solution. Good. Let's do something a little bit different here. Oh, hold on. What's that compound, NAI? Sodium iodide. Sodium iodide. Okay. If I have a solution with 100 milliliters of water and... milliliters of water and 11.2 grams of sodium iodide. So at 30 degrees, this 100 milliliters of water and 11 grams of sodium iodide, is it unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? Be careful. I smell a trap. Okay. So we have votes for all three categories. 
Here's what I'm, I'm going to tell you. You can't answer this question with the information you've been given. You cannot answer this question with the information given. So how much, how much solute can 100 milliliters of water at this temperature hold? There are several tricks here. So we're at 30 degrees. We're looking at sodium iodide. Oh my gosh. Um, my apologies. I was looking, let me change that formula. Um, I was looking at sodium iodate. Let's change this because this example makes no sense and maybe that's why some of you were giving me that look. Okay. Okay. Does that change your answer? Sodium iodate? Okay. Whoops. I, I need a ruler. My eyes jump all over the place. Okay. How many of you would say unsaturated? How many of you would say saturated? Super saturated. Okay. I'm going to tell you, you still can't answer the question with the information I gave you, even with the right compound. So let's, let's look at how much solute can 100 milliliters of water hold at 30 with sodium iodate. So at 30, 100 grams of water can dissolve... 10.7 grams sodium iodate. So, if you said unsaturated, right there, no, definitely not. It's definitely past that point of saturation. So, we're going to take unsaturated off the table. You know what, there's one other thing we didn't address. Units. Are we comparing correctly here? What do you need to know if you're using a chart that's given in grams of water and you're given a volume of water in milliliters? What do you need to know? What? I thought I heard it. <laughs> Density. How much mass per unit volume you see. Density? What's the density of water? How many grams of water does one milliliter of water weigh? We'll, we'll play the stand up, sit down lottery. Everybody stand up. Okay, go ahead. What's the density of water? 999.97 kilograms per meter cubed. That's not what I asked. What's the density? Of how, how many grams does a milliliter of water weigh? <laughs> Don't look in your book when I'm giving you a musical hint. Dun, 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 dun. One! Yay, somebody got it. One is the loneliest number, 70s pop stuff. No, nobody? Okay. I knew. <laughs> One! So if we have 100 milliliters of water, how many grams of water do we have? 100. Okay, you can all sit down, I guess. It seems like you've been beating with sticks. Okay, so, you know, we're not concerned about that anymore. We know this is not unsaturated. I told you you couldn't answer the question with the information that you were given. How much solute would a saturated solution have dissolved in it? Yeah, 10.7. 10.7 grams of sodium iodate. Are we over that mark? Yeah. So we know that this is at least saturated. Let me ask a question. How many of you watched the tutorial video last night? Hands. The question that you have to ask here, what does it look like? So 100 milliliters of H2O and 11.2 grams of sodium iodate at 30 where all solute this, let me go out of the way. 
is dissolved. So there are no chunks in the bottom. Every single bit of solute in there is dissolved. It's in solution. Now, can you answer that question? Is it over the point of saturation? Yes. And if it's over the point of saturation and every single bit of solute is in solution, there are no chunks in the bottom, stuff isn't precipitating out, this is a supersaturated solution. Now, if I told you that you had 11.2 grams of sodium iodate in there, but instead of all the solute being dissolved, we had some sort of chunks and stuff on the bottom that clearly hadn't dissolved, what could we say? Then it's a saturated solution. It's this, the solution is showing you that it can't accept any more solute. It can't dissolve any more solute. And so what you're seeing is undissolved solute in the, in the solution. Okay, let's move on to something a little bit trickier. So we have a solution comprised of 375 milliliters of water at 10 degrees Celsius with 275 grams of sodium bromide dissolved in it. Is it unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? What do you have to do here? The easiest way to handle this is a factor label. Um, you're comfortable doing factor labels. They're nice because they lay out all the steps and all the units for you. So what are we going to start with? We're going to start with water. So the easiest way to start this is with our 375 milliliters of water. And what are we going to do next? This is not like a factor label you've done for stoichiometry or conversions. It's a little bit different. Um, and you have to do a little bit more interpretation once you get the answer. <coughs> well, what we're actually going to go to next is a factor that tells us how many grams of solute you can dissolve per 100 grams of water. So we're looking at sodium bromide, and I always make a note to myself down here of the temperature so that I remember what column I'm looking in. So for sodium bromide at 10 degrees, um, 100, let's see, 100 grams of water can dissolve 85.2 grams of sodium bromide. Okay. What's the major problem we have here with this as a factor label? I got a huge problem. Yeah, no units cancel here. Nothing whatsoever matches. This is problematic. Well, that's because we have to do one more thing, and it's a simple thing to do. One milliliter of water is equal to one gram of water. So now milliliters of water cancel, grams of water cancel. What are we left with? Grams of sodium bromide. But what information are we getting from that? The amount of sodium bromide that So what do you have for a raw answer? Thirty-one point nine five. Mm, decimal error. Three hundred nineteen point five. Okay, grams of sodium bromide. What is that? That's how much sodium bromide we could potentially dissolve in that 375 milliliters of water. So this is 319.5 grams of sodium bromide can be dissolved in 375 milliliters of water 
at 10 Celsius. Okay, so now we have a number we can compare to. Is this solution unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? Well, we have 275 grams in there. Unsaturated. It's unsaturated. We actually have a lot of room to add solute to this before we bump up against saturation. So another question I could ask on something like this is, how many more grams of solute could be dissolved under these conditions? That's a nice kind of question. I like that. So from what you've figured out here, can you answer that? Pardon? Um, I'm getting 44.5. Yeah, less than 50. So how do we get that? Well, we could dissolve 319.5 grams, and we already have 275 grams. So we get 44.5 grams of sodium bromide that we could still dissolve in there. Okay. All right. So let's talk about that distinction between saturated and unsaturated for a second. If we have, we're going to start off with a simple statement. 250 milliliters of water with 300 grams of sodium nitrate in it at 80 degrees Celsius is cooled down to 20. Well, actually, let's, let's step back from that. That's pretty radical. That's pretty radical. Um, let's, let's only cool this to 60. We'll take this one step at a time. So, at 80, is this solution saturated? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tell you it's not. It's, it's an unsaturated solution at 80. At 80 degrees, we could put um, 332.5 grams of sodium nitrate into solution. So at 80 degrees Celsius, this solution has no trouble dissolving that amount of sodium nitrate. Now, at 60, this solution would have more solute than it can actually dissolve. Okay, At 60, I've, I've worked out the numbers here on a little scratch piece, and it's about 277, about 277 grams of solute that it could dissolve. If you are very, very careful and very, very talented and you cool this down from 80 to 60 and maybe you keep stirring it and you do it real slow, there's a chance you can get all of that solute to stay in solution. If you do that, what do we call that solution then? Super saturated. Because it's holding more solute than it really possibly should be able to at that temperature. But if you're not real careful or you're not real lucky or just the stars aren't lined up right, what's most likely to happen is that you're going to get precipitate that just magically appears out of solution. And it's, it's almost like a, a magic snow globe where you go from a clear solution to suddenly like thunk, little chunks coming out of that solution. And that's just a precipitate that's appearing because the solution can't actually dissolve that much solute. So the question is, if we do this, and this is a question that you commonly see, what mass of precipitate would we expect? You know, assuming that all the conditions are not just right, what mass of precipitate, geez Louise, what precipitate of precipitate? No. What mass of precipitate, precipitate, <coughs> would you expect? So what's our first step to figuring this out? Is in tight. What's our first step to figuring this out? Okay. I like that. How do we do that? Okay, so what are we going to start with for a factor label? Yeah, and, you know, if, we, if we're really strict about this and we start with our given, we have 0.25 liters of water. 
And we can pretty quickly say, oh, okay, well, one, or, uh, yeah, one 10 to the negative third liters, one milliliter. So that gets us into milliliters. And now what do we need? For every 100 grams of water, we can dissolve how much sodium nitrate at 60? Hannah, how much? So 100 grams of water can dissolve 122 grams of sodium nitrate at that temperature. What's the last step? So we make sure all our units cancel. And I know, really, if you were doing this in a college chemistry class, if you were doing this as a chemist, you would probably just skip this last step. It's bookkeeping. But to train the brain, I like to do that bookkeeping step. So we want to add that one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water. So now we're going to take out all of our liters, all of our milliliters, all of our grams. What are we left with? Yeah, a mass of sodium nitrate. What's the raw number? What's our raw number? number are you getting? What are you getting? 305. Hmm. So, is there going to be any precipitate? I screwed up my numbers, folks. Is there going to be any precipitate? <clears throat> no. It can, at 60, it can still hold 305 grams of sodium nitrate. <clears throat> I screwed up. I read the wrong column. Oops. Um, it happens. This is what happens when I make up problems off the top of my head. There's not going to be any precipitate at 60. So the answer to this question would be no precipitate. It's still unsaturated. Huh? By this much, yeah. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of room in there to add more, to dissolve more solute, but we have a little bit. Okay, what if we cool this to 40? Okay, how much precipitate do we get at that point? Okay, our first step to see how much precipitate we're going to get out at 40 is what? What is it? It's another factor label. Given amount of water. Yeah, we're just starting with our given. So basically, we get to copy this entire thing with a few different numbers. And the number, the only number we have to change is the amount of sodium chloride or sodium nitrate that we can dissolve at this temperature because. Here we were at 60, here we're at 40. Okay, how much sodium nitrate can we dissolve at 40? 100, well, 102, um, 102 per 100 grams of water. So, 102. What's our raw number? Yeah, 255 grams of sodium nitrate. So how much precipitate are we going to see? Well, we have 300 dissolved in there. That's what the solution is currently holding. We need to <coughs> subtract the amount that the solution can hold at, under its new conditions at its new temperature. And what we get is 45. So we, should, we would expect to see about 45 grams of sodium nitrate at that. Yes, ma'am. 
you would sig fig the final answer. So here we had three sig figs. That would be a sig fig answer. Yeah. Yeah, because up to here, you know, it depends on what we're asking. If we're asking how many grams of solute can it hold at this, we would sig fig this. But yeah, whatever your final answer is, that's what you're going to sig fig. So this is the thing we would do. Okay, let's do, oh, let's see. Yeah, that, that, okay. That covers it. Questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Um, what I have for you is a practice sheet. It's got four different kinds of problems using a solubility table. Um, typically, I would try to have more, but honestly, this was an old quiz that I reworked at the last minute to make it into a practice sheet. You'll have a FIP on this tomorrow, and then we start molarity. This is, yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's neat, because then we can combine the two ideas. This is another thing, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning. This is another one that's an AT, ACT score booster kind of thing, because you're using, you know, the, getting information from charts and graphs with previous information and understanding what, you know, common scientific terms mean. So it's, it's a good practice thing. All right, you have practice. I did put some homework problems up. Of course, your outlines are due tomorrow, your chapter readings. Um, homework is due Tuesday. You have practice, and then there's a FIP quiz. That's all, folks.